Hello, everybody. This is Reverend Dr. Red. Um, and this video is about the differences in Bible translations. Now, everybody should want to know what the truth is. Every Christian should want to know that the Bible they're reading is indeed the true word of God. Every Christian preacher or pastor should want to know what the truth is. If you go to spiritualmessiahministries.org and you pull up the article, Difference in Bible Translations, it is a very lengthy article, but I recommend reading it. Even if you just read a section of it at a time and get yourself familiar with the differences, um, it is very, very important. The smallest, minute differences in the scriptures of the different translations of the Bible may make a big impact on the meaning of the scripture that you're reading. And, you know, if we're reading the Bible, the Bible will supposed to be the Word of God. So we want to make sure we're getting, we're actually reading the Word of God, not some um, false interpretation thereof written down by man. And again, I'm going to be using um, my uh, iPhone as my index cards here. So I don't go off on a, too much of a tangent on, you know, other topics as relevant as they may be. <clears throat> I want to make sure that everything pretty much stays in tune. Um, so let to make sure this uh, camera is going to be steady for me here. Yeah? Um, now, before I get started, you might want to say, I'm just going to show you a couple Bibles that I have, okay? Yeah. Through me telling you about the dimensions in Bible translations, you understand why I chose the Bibles that I have. Now, download from my phone, if you go to uh, olivetree.com, or if you go to uversion.com, uversion might be a better choice. I use both. I have quite a few different um, applications I use on, on my phones. They also have desktop versions you can use. Um, I have, I do have downloaded all of the English translations that are available. I do occasionally read through all of the different uh, translations to compare verse by verse the different translations just to see how they've been changed from my own personal studies. However, when, I'm, when I quote scripture, they're always going to be from the same Bible because there's only one Bible, I believe, in, in today's existence that very closely matches word for word what was stated. As I said in the video and the article, the history of the Bible, the Tyndale Bible is the only Bible that has 100% word for word translation. However, there are two differences, that, that, uh, two problems with that Bible that will make it difficult for the everyday reader. If you're um, learned in the Bible, it won't be that hard to read. But for the average person, it might be a little, bit hard, a little hard to read because of the many, many, many spelling errors throughout. Because, again, I'm going to tell you that there, are, there was no real way of spelling anything back then. People more, particularly, you know, William Tyndale, he did it in his Bible, spelled things based on how it was pronounced. There wasn't really any set way of spelling this, that, or the other thing. Um, so spelling errors and grammatical errors do run rampant in the Tyndale Bible, which makes it a little bit hard to read. Um, but that and, but, and getting your hands on one, on an actual, you can hold it in your hands and lug it around, Light, somewhat lightweight Bible, you're looking at up to $3,000 for the Tyndale Bible. Now, not all of us have $3,000 on hand we can just toss away like that. If I did, believe me, I would. I'd get a Tyndale Bible in a heartbeat. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an actual hard copy of the Tyndale Bible. I don't have the money for it. I have the Tyndale Bible, um, but I do have a copy of the Tyndale Bible on my phone. In our copy, I have uh, 
this edition of the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible edition. It is a little thick, as you can see. It's a little bit thicker in this Bible here, as you can clearly see. But the both of these are 400 year anniversary um, King James Version Bibles of the original 1611 King James Version Bible. If you open the Bibles up, they are in the original text, the way it was written back in 1611. And the cover page is even the original cover of the original 1611 Bible. Now, the reason why I have the two anniversary editions of the 1611 King James Version Bible is because I feel it's very important to have on hand. And the thicker one normally stays here. The thinner one I sometimes take with me in my vehicle. I, I um, stop of running the Christian Messiah Ministries out of my home, like I've said on the website. And I also have a street ministry. I'll go out and I'll preach on street corners or um, on college campuses, um, in parks, at events people invite me to. I'll go to other churches. You know, wherever anybody invites me, that's where I'll go and I'll preach. And if I'm out shopping someplace, and you know, somebody starts talking to me, or I start talking to them, and an opening arises, I'll start preaching. You know, that's what I do. Uh, but my ministry isn't just confined to the building. So, this one comes with me sometimes, wherever I go, in my vehicle. So I'm on the street, whether it be at a park, or at a, an event someplace, or I'm visiting another church, or, you know, wherever I might be, I have a copy of the 1611 King James Version Bible on hand with me. And as I said, this 1611 King James Bible, the thicker one, stays here at the ministry in my home for purposes of my studies, my personal studies. Then I have this Bible, which is the King James edition. I believe you can uh, see it across the top here. Uh, it says Holy Bible. It is the 1738 reprint of the 1611 King James Bible, where they corrected a few spelling errors and um, changed a couple of words around to match how they spoke in the 1700s. Other than that, it is pretty much a duplicate of the 1611. Just, you know, like I, as I said, they just fixed a couple of spelling errors. Then, I also have this Bible. As you can see, I said on the side, it is a Holy Bible, the King James Version. It is an authorized edition of the King James Bible. It is, a, I believe it's a 1738 reprint of the 1611. It, it contains the full Old Testament and full New Testament. It is a pocket Bible that I take with me everywhere I go. Before I leave to go anywhere, I, put, I stick this Bible in my, in my pocket and it comes with me everywhere. Um, again, as I said, I don't just preach in the ministry. I go out and I preach wherever the preaching takes me. Speaking events, uh, in the parks, on street corners, in supermarkets, you know, wherever I, 
the uh, time they arrives that I'm asked to preach, or uh, the doors open to be to preach. Um, and I, ha I, I want to be sure I'm prepared and have my trusty Bible to go by. So if I get stuck on anything, if, I, if I'm not sure I have scripture memorized exactly, I can look up the scripture I want and call it word for word. If somebody else has a question about it, I have the Bible right here. Um, Now, uh, some of you might be questioning, well, if I have the Bibles downloaded from my phone, so I do have 1611 downloaded from my phone. I have the King James Version downloaded from my phone. I have all the other English translations downloaded from my phone. Why not just use the phone? Why uh, have the bulk of the books? I, I agree that, you know, it is a time saver in some instances, and a space saver in others, to have everything on electronic devices. However, if the battery in the phone should go dead, or for whatever reason electricity goes down, and electronics goes down, it is always good to have the paperbacks. You know, an actual physical copy of the book. In this case, the Bible. And that, and as much as I do much like to have the Bible on my phones, um, I also like to keep the Bible on me, an actual physical copy on me. I, I don't believe in this everything should be digital nonsense. And as I just said, you know what happens if, if the electronics go down, or electricity gets turned off, or, you know, something happens. Now you have no access to a Bible. Now you have no access to any of your books. So yes, I will put copies of different books that I read, including the Bible, on my phone, but I also like to keep, uh, keep the actual copies of it on hand at all times. And I, as, you know, I will admit that I had referred to um, the electronic version of the Bible in different instances, but nine times out of ten, I will pick up the hard copy, the actual physical copy of the Bible. Just what I feel should be done. Um, <clears throat> now, some of the differences of Bible translations. The Tinder Bible was a 100% word-for-word translation of the original text. You know, in one Tinder, another, you know, great Christians were murdered for Christians in the States, are covered in the article, uh, History of the Bible. So please go to spiritualmessiahministries.org and uh, read through the article, History of the Bible. Um, the King James Version holds a 90% accuracy rate. The modern King James Version has a language update, uh, changed wording, animals' names corrected according to scientific studies, Titles of Psalms and places changed actual meaning as opposed to the original name. The New King James Version, I'll get into that. Um, the King James 21st century has a language update and alleged preservation of accuracy. Again, that's going to be covered in the New King James section. Uh, the common version, which is the Webster's revision of the King James Version, is updated to language of the time, meaning uh, 1833. And it altered verses and it substituted words. Uh, the revised version, which is the revised King James Version, became the American Standard Version, or the ASV, in 1901. The uh, revised Standard Version in 1952 and in 1971, added alleged discovered manuscripts. The New American Bible displaced the book of Jonah and the order of John's and Peter's 
They added Tobit, Judith, and Maccabees, Wisdom, Sarath, and Baruch. They also added chapters to Esther, Daniel, and Joel, and removed the chapter from Malachi. Now, here's a list of the significant changes. Um, you know, changes which, which affect the meaning. It's made to the King James Version text since 1611. The 1611 reading is first, followed by the uh, changes. 1 Corinthians 12.28 Helps in uh, helps in government versus helps governments. Now, simple spelling corrections. Um, okay, then we have Joshua 3.11 Ark of the Covenant, even the Lord verse Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Um, 2 Kings 11.10 In the temple versus in the temple of the Lord. Isaiah 49.13 For God versus for the Lord. Jeremiah 31.14 With goodness versus with goodness. Now it's goodness separated versus goodness as one word. Um, Jeremiah 51.13 Burnt the dwelling places Versus burned her dwelling places. Did you hear that? They changed there to her. Uh, Ezekiel 6 8. That he may versus that ye may. They changed he to ye. As in he to you. What, why? Ezekiel 28 5. Let him see it versus let them. And Ezekiel 24 7. Pour it upon the ground versus pour it not upon the ground. Ezekiel 48 8. Which they shall versus which ye shall. Daniel 3 15. A fiery furnace versus a burning fiery furnace. Matthew 14 9. The old sake versus the oaths said. First Corinthians fifteen six. And that as opposed to after that. Um first John five four the son hath versus the son of God hath. Do you see the differences here? I mean it's only between the 1611 King James Version and the, 16, the 1769 Version of the King James. Now, if anyone wants to check out the above readings for themselves, both the 1611 King James Version and the 1769 King James Version are available freely for eSword. The list itself can be found in differences between Bible versions updated and expanded edition by Gary F. Ziola. Um, additionally, even today, there are two versions of the King James Version in, in use. In the Oxford and Cambridge editions. Some of the differences in them affect the meaning of the text as well. For example, here are a couple of Cambridge passages versus their Oxford counterparts. Jeremiah 34.16 Whom ye had set, as opposed to whom he had set. And Second Timothy two two, heard from me, versus heard of me. Now let's compare Bible. You know you will see def several good examples of how modern Bible versions are attacking God's word. We have selected eight modern translations for evaluation. The translations evaluated are as follows: from the New International Version. The New American Standard Bible, the New Revised Standard Bible, the Revised English Bible, the Living Bible, the New World Translation, the New American Bible, and the New King James Version. <coughs> now, we'll all <coughs> now, we'll all be able to study eight new translations. 
You will find many of these attacks manifested in any new translation. You will find that some of the most important doctrines of the Bible are being attacked in the new versions, when they have a living Bible, a new century version, can revise standard version, or any of the other perversions of scripture. You are going to see the devil hard at work on the revision committees of the new translations. The King James reading will appear first, okay, followed by a brief comment and then the perverted readings of the modern perversions. Psalm 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried clean a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now the above promise from the King James Bible tells us that God intends to preserve his words forever. Notice how the new version destroys promise by making you think the context is God's people rather than his words. In the New International Version, it says, you will keep us safe. The uh, New American Standard Bible, and thou wilt preserve him. The New Reserve, uh, the NRSV, you, O Lord, will protect us. REB, you are our protector. The LB, you will forever preserve your own. And NAB, you, O Lord, will keep us. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Nor shall the new virgin attack the virgin birth of Christ by robbing Mary of her virginity. As anyone well knows, a young man or maiden is not necessarily a virgin. The NRSV, young woman. The REB, young woman. Uh, the NWT, maiden. In Luke 2.33, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Here are the new versions. Here the new versions attack the virgin birth by telling us that Joseph was Christ's father. The NIV, the child's father. The NASB, his father. The NRSV, the child's father. REB, the child's father. From the NWT, its father. The NAB, the child's father. First Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, concluded unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now notice how the King James is very clear in telling us who was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Now watch the new perversions throw God clear out of the verse. The NIV, he appeared in the body. NASB, he who was revealed in the flesh. NRSV, he was revealed in flesh. The REB, he was manifested in the flesh. The LB, who came to earth as a man. NWT, he was made manifest in the flesh. The NAB, he was manifested in the flesh. Micah 5.2 But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, thou, thou, though thou, be, there, there, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall, be, shall he come forth, to me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. This is a prophecy of Lord Jesus Christ, and the verse tell us that he had no beginning. As the second member of the Trinity, he is eternal, of from everlasting, but not in most modern translations. The NIV, from ancient times. NRSV, from ancient times. REB, in ancient times. Uh, are you starting to um, see where, where this is going? Now, in the King James Bible, 
It's supposed to be written in an old, clean, archaic language. And people today have trouble understanding. But please notice how so many of our modern sayings come from between its covers. Hundreds could be pre presented, but we'll limit ourselves to 75. <clears throat> Genesis 4, 2-5. <two> <clears throat> You can't get blood from a turnip. <clears throat> Genesis 7, don't miss the boat. Genesis 11, 7-9, Babylon. Genesis 15, 5, Teller. Genesis 43-34, mess of food. Exodus 19, 16-8, holy smoke. Exodus 28-42, bridges. Exodus 32.8, Holy Cow. Leviticus 2.14, Roast Ears. Leviticus 13.10, The Quick War Flesh. Leviticus 14.5-6, uh, Running Water. Leviticus 16.8, Scapegoat. Leviticus 25.10, Liberty Bell. Numbers 21.5, Light bread. Ugh. Numbers 35, 2 through 5. Suburb. Deuteronomy 2, 14. Wasted him. Deuteronomy 24, 5. Cheer up. Deuteronomy 32, 10. Apple of his eye. Judges 5, 20. Star Wars. That's right, Star Wars is in the Bible. Judges 7, 5 through 12, Underdog. Judges 8 through 16, Teach a Lesson. Judges 17, 10, Calling a Priest Father. 1 Samuel 14, 12, I'll show you a thing or two. 1 Samuel 20, 40, Artillery. 1 Samuel 25:37, petrified. First, uh, Second Samuel 19:18, ferry boat. First Kings 3:7, don't know if he's coming or going. First Kings 14:3, cracklings. First Kings 14:6, that's heavy. First Kings 29:19 to 23. She's gone to the dogs. Second Chronicles 9.6. You haven't heard half of it. Second Chronicles 36. Postman. 33. Uh, Nehemiah 13.11. Set them in their place. Esther 7.9. He hung himself. Job 11.11.16. It's water under the bridge. Job 26. He has his head in the clouds. Psalm 4 8. Let me down to sleep. Let me down to sleep. Psalm 19 3 4. He gave me a line. Psalm 37 13. His day is coming. Psalm 58 8. Pass away. Psalm 64, 3-4, shoot off your mouth. In Psalm 78, 25, angel food cake. <clears throat> Psalm 141, 10, give him enough rope and he'll hang himself. Proverbs 7, 22, dumb as an ox. Proverbs 13, 24, Spare the rod, spoil the child. Proverbs 18.6. He is asking for it. Proverbs 24.16. You can't keep a good man down. Proverbs 24.14. Full of hot air. Proverbs 30.30. 30, King of beasts. Ecclesiastes 10.19. Money talks. 
Ecclesiastes 10, 20. A little bird told me. Song, Song of Solomon, 2 to 5. Uh, 2 to 5. Love sick. Isaiah 52, 8. She eye to eye. Jeremiah 23:25. I have a dream. That's right. The famous lines from Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream, came from Jeremiah 23:25 of the King James Version Bible. Ezekiel 26:9. Engines. Ezekiel 38:9. Desert storm, more storm troopers. Daniel 3.21, Pose. Daniel 8.25, Foreign Policy. Daniel 11.38, The Force Be With You. Hosea 7.8, Have Faith. Jonah 4.10-11, Can't Tell Left From Right. Zephaniah 3.8-9, United Nations Assembly. Matthew 25, 1 through 10. Burning the midnight oil. Matthew 25, 33. Right or left side of an issue. Matthew 27, 46. For crying out loud. Matthew, uh, Mark 5, 13. Hog Wild. Luke 11.46. Won't lift a finger to help. Luke 15.17. He came to himself. Romans 2.23. Breaking the law. Philippians 3.2. Beware of dog. Colossians 2.14. Commit out him. 1 John 5.11-13. Get a life. Revelation 6.8. Hell on earth. Revelation 16.13. A frog in my throat. Revelation 20.15. Jump in the lake. Now, if you've checked these references, then you can easily see how, all, how our all-wise God has played a beautiful joke from the modern revisionists. People do not even believe the King James Version quoted every day. Furthermore, furthermore, if you'll grab yourself a NIV, a NTV, a TEV, or anything else, You'll find that many of these modern sayings have been destroyed by the better language of the Lovisians. For example, I always thought that when I was a young boy, my father and I crossed the Mississippi on a ferry boat, 2 Samuel 19.18, but I guess we must have crossed at the fort instead, NIV. Then there were times when I got out of one and, and that would really set me in my place. Nehemiah 1311. Too bad he didn't have an NIV when he could have stationed me at my post. I guess there's something that I love more than going out early on Saturday mornings and catching a mess of fish. Genesis 4 334. It's a good thing we didn't have a New King James version in those days, where he would have only caught a servant. We usually had hush puppies with that fish dinner, but sometimes we just have light bread. Numbers 21.5. That is until the neighbors came over with their new American Bible. Then we had wretched food. Then Dad would always say, Cheer up, son. Can we better next time? Deuteronomy 24.5. Too bad he didn't have a new, a new King James Version, for I'm sure he would have said, Come on, boy, bring happiness to yourself. So you get the point? The new versions don't stand a chance when competing with the King James Version.
to use the most modern speech. Go ahead. Have yourself some fun. Learn to appreciate God's sense of humor. Grab a new translation and see firsthand how the modern versions are still stuck in the dark ages when it comes to keeping up with modern speech. Now, in the translation of the King James Version, unlike Westcott, Court, <coughs> and the RV Committee, <coughs> King James went through great efforts from the guard to the 1611 translation from errors. <coughs> Excuse me. In 1604, King James announced that 54 Hebrew and Greek scholars have been appointed to translate a new Bible for English-speaking people. The number was reduced to 47 by the time the work formally began in 1607. Rather than working all at one location, these men were divided into six separate groups coming towards that three separate locations. And there were two at Westminster, two at Oxford, and two at Cambridge. And each group was given a splendid portion of scripture to translate. And each scholar made his own translation of a book and then passed it on to be reviewed by each member of the group. The whole group then went over the book together. And once the group had completed the book of the Bible, they tended to be reviewed by the other five groups. All objectionable and questionable translating was marked and noted, and then it was returned to the original group for consideration. A special com committee was, in f uh, was formed by selecting one leader from each group. This committee worked out all the remaining differences and presented a finished copy for the printers in 1611. This means that the King James Bible had to pass at least 14 examinations before going to press. <laughs> Throughout this entire process, any learned individuals of the land can be called upon for their judgment and their churches were kept informed of the progress. <laughs> Question. Does this sound like an honest work of God? Or a dishonest work of the devil? <clears throat> Editions of the King James Bible. Now, if I'm going to start to produce a new Bible version, <coughs> then I must also convince <coughs> Christians that there is a need, <coughs> a need and a justifiable cause to the new version. One of the deceitful excuses being used today for producing new versions is that the King James Bible has been revived several times since 1611. And that a new revision is needed once again. While spreading this piece of deceitful misinformation, the King James Version critics hold their breath, hoping that no one will be intelligent enough to ask for specific details about these revisions. The many revisions that have occurred since 1881 bear no resemblance to the various editions of the King James Version prior to 1881. And the modern revisers are just trying to justify their sins. There were only four national editions of the King James Bible produced after 1611. And that's 1629, 1638, 1762, and 1769. I have the 1769 editions. These, and the 1611 editions. These were not translations of the new versions since 1881. And they really weren't even revisions. The 1629 edition was simply an effort to correct printing errors, and two of the original King James translators consisted in the work. The 1638 edition of the King James Version also dealt with printing errors, especially words and clauses overlooked by the printers. About 72% of the textual corrections of the, in the King James Version were done by 1638. 
only 27 years after the first printing. Now, please bear in mind, the fact that printing was a very laborious task prior to the 1800s. Publishing a flawless work was almost impossible. Even today, with computers and advanced word processors, printing errors are still frequently made. Imagine what it was like in the 1500s. And then in 1762 and 1769, two final editions of the King James Version were published. And both of these involved spelling changes which became necessary as the English language became more stabilized and spelling rules were established. And there were no new translations and there were really no new revisions published in 1629, 1683, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, 1638, 1762, or 1769. These were simply editions of the 1611 King James Version, which corrected printing errors and spelling. Those who try to equate these editions with the modern translations are just being deceitful or stupid or both. The many other so-called revisions of the King James Version that occurred in 1613, 1616, 1617, and 1743 are nothing more than running changes and touch-up work at the printers. <clears throat> the real revisions and translations do not start appearing until the 1881 revision and the 1901 American Standard Version. And so if some punk walks up with a smirky grin on his face and asks you, so which King James Bible do you have? The 1611, the 1629, uh, the 1638, the 1762, or the 1769. You can simply state you have a 1769 edition of the King James 1611 authorized version. Uh, Dr. David F. F. Regan has an excellent pamphlet available on this subject. It can be ordered from Trinity Baptist Temple Bookstore at 5709 North Broadway, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37918. His telephone number is 615-688-0780. This information is also in the article, Difference of Bible Translations, on spiritualmessiahministries.org. Errors of the King James Version. Critics, <coughs> critics of the King James Version have a nasty habit of pointing out what they believe to be errors, contradictions, and mistranslations in the authorized version. <coughs> the sad fact is that they usually point these things out to the young men and women in Christian colleges who do not know any better. Many young Christians, including young preachers, are having their faith in God's Word destroyed by the very people they look to for spiritual guidance. You see, and that's why I'm here. Me being a young preacher myself, young, a young minister myself, again, legally ordained, I have my doctor, not my doctor if need a degree. This is why I'm here. To go out there and preach to everybody the truth. To give everybody... God's Word, where to find it, the true by the true English Bible, and how to defend it against these <coughs> wannabe Christians or these Christian preachers who might honestly feel in their heart that they're a Christian and preaching God's Word, they were just led astray, possibly by the, by the preachers that that's what them. Now I'm here to correct that and to allow these young uh, Christian men and women as well as uh, all the Christian ministers out there that may have been led astray to uh, be brought back to Christ and be handed the ammunition needed to defend God's Word. Now, the so-called errors that are presented by such infidels 
have been explained and written about so many times and that it's a shame to even have to mention it again. There isn't enough space in the booklet to embark upon a lengthy rebuttal of such claims. Besides, it has already been done quite well by others. Nevertheless, for the sake of, of um, you know, showing the readers of the, uh, of the Spiritual Truth by Spiritual Messiah Ministries um, publication on SpiritualMessiahMinistries.org and the viewers of this video, the nature of the so-called errors in the American version, we will take the time to briefly deal with just a few. According to the critics, the word Easter in Acts 12.4 is a mistranslation because the Greek word means Pascha, and it is translated Passover 28 times in the New Testament, and it should be translated likewise in Acts 12.4. And that's what happens when a man is so hung up on the Greek that he can't read plain English. It should not be translated as Passover because the Passover can already pass. The days can one of them to bread has already begun. Verse 3. Which means the Passover was over. Numbers 28, 16 through 18, Exodus 12, 13 through 18. The Passover was always from the 14th day from the first month, while the days of unleavened bread ran from the 15th through the 21st. Herod could not have been waiting for the Passover. Besides, why would a Gentile king like Herod be concerned about a Jewish feast day? Easter is from, a, is from the pagan Ishtar, the goddess that the pagans worshipped, Rome included. Herod wanted to wait until his pagan holiday was over before bringing Peter out to the people. 2. First John 5.7 is also the subject of much debate. It is argued that the verse lacks manuscript evidence and does not belong in the Bible. Being one of the greatest verses in the Bible on the Trinity, we should be suspicious of anyone <coughs> Who opposes it? The verse should not be omitted from the Bible. It is found in Greek manuscript 61, which probably probably forced Erasmus to include it in his third edition of Greek text of 1522. In 1 John 5 7, it is also found in Codex Rabianus and in the margins of 88 and 629, it is also found in old Latin manuscripts. Um, R and Speculum. It was quoted by Cyprian around AD 250, and two Spanish bishops quoted it in the 4th century. Uh, several African writers quoted it in the 5th century, and Cassiodorus quoted it in the 6th century in Italy. The fact that uh, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus do not include the verse means nothing to be to a true Bible believer. After all, Vaticanus omits the entire book of Revelation while keeping the Apocrypha. <coughs> now, in case any of you are starting to question from questioning Catholicism, I do have articles concerning, you know, Catholicism as well as other Protestant faiths, as well as other denominations of Christianity. And I will have videos touching this subject matter of these different denominations of Christianity. Especially considering the fact I'm here to preach true Christianity and bring Christianity back to its roots. Therefore, all Christianity, as well as all faiths, as it matches or clashes with Christianity, must be dealt with in order for one to understand what true Christianity really is and how to return Christianity back to its roots. It must be fully understood. What Christianity, how Christianity is being seen today in numerous different lights and denominations, how other faiths are looking at Christianity, and how other faiths either coincide with or clash the different beliefs Christianity holds. So there will be videos upcoming that touch this topic, and I do have a few articles that uh, can touch on this topic, but there will be more articles 
more in depth as well as video is touching upon this topic. <coughs> Three. Many argue that the King James Version <coughs> is an error when its use of the word devils instead of demons. Again, this is due to an overemphasis on the Greek, that as well as a lack of faith in God's ability to preserve his words in English. While protesting that demon, the uh, demons who translate a demon, many have overlooked a great truth from which the Holy Spirit has preserved in the, in the King's English. There is one true Son of God, from many sons of God. There is one true church, the Bride of Christ, from many local churches. Likewise, there is one devil, but many devil under control. Not be the capitalization versus the lowercase of the words. And the word demon itself does not necessarily imply an evil spirit. Even Webster's 1820 dictionary states that the ancients believed that there were good and evil demons, and New Agers of today believe likewise. Therefore, God led the KGB translators to translate devils instead of demons, because every demon in the Bible is an evil spirit. The word devil makes that clear. Every devil in the Bible is under the authority of the Father, the devil. <clears throat> then we have contradictions like Exodus, Exodus 24.10 and John 1.18. Exodus says the Israelites saw God, while Jesus says in John that no man hath seen God at any time. Contradiction, right? No. It's only a matter of rightly dividing the word of truth, which you may not be practicing if 2 Timothy 3.15 has an altered in your Bible. God is a trinity, just like you and I, where a body can the soul and the spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the Israelites saw a physical manifestation of God, but not the soul of God. Just as no one has ever seen your soul. <laughs> then we have Numbers 25.9 says that 24,000 people died from the plague. But 1 Corinthians 10.8 says that only 23,000 died. Read 1 Corinthians 10.8 again. And notice that 23,000 <clears throat> fell in one day. The 24,000 died all together in a few days. You see, these are the kind of errors in the King James Bible. These are the reasons given for you to throw a your Bible and buy a new one. Don't fall for it. I have always learned, I, I have always learned to always give God ben the benefit of a doubt. And to account the critics guilty until proven innocent. So far, I've been right. Anytime I, I see an error, in the King James Version, can I just assume that I'm not learned enough in the scriptures to explain it, but that is not an error. I just pray that, I just pray, I just pray about it and trust God. Can I never correct the book that God has honored for so long? Thank God I'm not that stupid. Uh, the New King James Version. We will now give some special attention to one of the deadliest translations on the market. <coughs> the New King James Version. First published in 1979. The deadly version because editors have succeeded in deceiving the body of Christ on two main points. One, that is the King James Bible, which is a lie. And two, <coughs> that it's based on the Textus Receptus, which is only a partial truth. And the following information should be helpful when dealing with Christians who have been swindled by the Laodicean lovers of filthy lucre. <coughs> Excuse me. The text of the New King James Version is copyrighted by Thomas Nelson Publishers. <coughs> While there is no copyright on the text of the King James Version. If your King James Version has maps or notes, then it may have a copyright, but the text itself does not. 
There is nothing new about the New King James Version logo. It is a 666 symbol of the pagan trinity which was used in the ancient Egyptian mysteries. It was also used by Satanist Aleister Crowley around the turn of this century. The symbol can be seen from the New King James Bible on certain rock albums like Led Zeppelin's or you can see it on the cover of such New Age books as the Aquarian Conspiracy. It is estimated that the New King James Version makes over 100,000 translation changes, which comes to over 80 changes per page and about 3 changes per verse. A great number of these changes bring the New King James Version in line with the readings of such Alexandrian perversions as the New International Version and the, and the Revised Standard Version, where changes are not made in the text, several footnotes often give credence to the West Scott and Horse Greek text. While passing off as being true to the Tetris Receptus, the New King James Version ignores the Receptus over 1,200 times. In the New King James Version, there are 22 omissions of hell, 23 omissions of blood, 44 omissions of repent, 50 omissions of heaven, 51 omissions of God, and 66 omissions of Lord. In the terms devils, damnation, Jehovah, and New Testament are completely omitted. The New King James Version can the most the Lord Jesus Christ. In, uh, in John 1 3, the King James Version says that all things were made by Jesus Christ. But in the New King James Version, all things were just made through Him. The word servant replaces son in Acts 3 13 and 3 26. Servant replaces child in Acts 4.27 and 4.30. The word Jesus is omitted from Mark 2.15, Hebrews 4.8, and Acts 7.45. No mention in Jesus there. The New King James Version confuses people about salvation. In Hebrews 10.14, <coughs> It replaces our sanctified with our being sanctified. And it replaces our saved with our being saved. In 1 Corinthians uh, one eighteen and 2 Corinthians 2.15. The words may believe have been replaced with may continue to believe. In 1 John 5.13... Uh, the old straight and narrow way of Matthew 7.14 has become the difficult way in the New King James Version. And in 2 Corinthians 10.5, the King James Version reads casting down imaginations, but the New King James Version reads casting down arguments. The word thought, which occurs later in the verse, Matches imaginations, not arguments. This change weakens the verse. And the King James Version tells us to reject a heretic after the second admonition in Titus 3.10. The New King James Version tells us to reject a divisive man. How nice! Now that Alexandrians and Ecumenicals have justification for rejecting anyone they wish to label as divisive man. According to the New King James Version, no one would stoop so low to pronounce the corrupt God's word. No, they just peddle it. In 2 Corinthians 2.17, the reading matches the Alexandrian versions. And since the New King James Version has changed the truth of God into a lie, and has also changed Romans 1.25 to read, exchange the truth of God for the lie. This reading matches the readings of the New Perversions. So, 
How shady is the King James Bible? The New King James Version gives us no command to study God's Word in 2 uh, Timothy 2.15. The word science is replaced with knowledge in 1 Timothy 6.20, although science has occurred in every edition of King James Version since 1611. How shady is the King James Bible? The Jews require a sign according to 1 Corinthians 1.22 and according to Jesus Christ, John 4.48. But the New King James Version said they only request a sign. They didn't request one when signs first appear in Exodus 4. There are numerous places throughout the Bible where God gives Israel signs when they haven't requested anything. Exodus 4. Exodus 31.13, Numbers 26.10, uh, 1 Samuel 2.34, Isaiah 7.10-14, Luke 2.12, etc. They require a sign because signs are part of the national heritage. The King James reading in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature which matches the word of Christ in Mark 16.15. The cross reference is destroyed in the New King James Version, which uses the word creation. As a final note, we'd like to point out how the New King James Version is very inconsistent in its attempt to update the language of the King James Version. The, pre the preface to the New King James Version states that previous revisions from the King James Version have sought to keep abreast of changes in English speech. And also that they too are um, taking a further step toward its objective. However, when taking a closer look at the language of the New King James Version, we find that oftentimes they are stepping backwards. Can you please note a few examples of how well the New King James Version has kept abreast of the changes in English language. Scriptures. The scripture of King James Version versus the New King James Version. Ezra 31.4 Little Rivers now becomes the Rivulets. Psalms 41.43.1 uh, Judge becomes Vindicate. Psalm 139.43 uh, Thoughts becomes Anxieties. <coughs> Uh, Psalms 13943, yeah, the Isaiah 21.8, fat becomes burden. Amos 5.21, smell becomes savor. Matthew 26.7, box becomes flat. Luke 8.31, the deep becomes the abyss. John 10.41, date becomes performed. Luke 19.11-27, pounds becomes meanness. Ninth, uh, John 19.9, judgment well, Judgment Hall becomes Praetorium. Uh, Acts 1.8, Bowels becomes Entrails. Acts 18.12, Deputy becomes Proconsul. <clears throat> Acts 21.38, Uproar becomes Interruption. Acts 27.30, Boat becomes Skiff. Hebrews 12.8, Bastard becomes Illegitimate. Do you see a change of shape between the King James Version and the New King James Version? <coughs> now we have some stumbling stones from the Laodicean translations. I'd like to point out one of the best things <coughs> about the new versions. What might that be? It's the fact that we know where they're going to point the God's word before they do it. We know how to check them out without having to waste our God-given time reading the whole translation. The following list includes a couple of checkpoints which anyone can use to expose a new translation. No translation will be guilty on all 50 counts. 
But any translation since 1881 will alter God's word enough to prove that the revisionists do not have God's best interest in heart. Can Francis uh, present these items from the same standpoint, briefly illustrating his purpose for many of the changes? I'm going to list a few of them in this video. And you can read the rest of them in the article, Differences of Bible Translations, on uh, Messiah Ministries.org. Genesis 129. Omit the word meat, since there is no real flesh in the verse, only plant life. This will destroy the cross reference to the meat offering of Leviticus 2. One is really a grain offering with no flesh. The Bible has its own book and dictionary, but let's not allow people to know it. <coughs> Genesis 3 5. After the word God's, <coughs> alter the word God's, and then the cross reference to Psalm 82, 1 Corinthians 8 5, and 2 Corinthians 4 4 will be destroyed. Genesis 22.1, the word tempt in the verse should be replaced with try. Here's another case of the built-in dictionary. James 1, 2 to 3 explains the kind of tempting that this was, but let's tie it from as many Christians as possible. Numbers 30-52, someone might use the word pictures as a reference to television. Throw it out. Isaiah 7.14, can adapt the virgin birth by omitting the word virgin. After all, the Hebrew word Alma can mean a virgin, a damsel, or just a young woman. Well, this scene Christians are too lazy to detect Matthew 1.23 to see how Matthew translated it. Daniel 3.25, there is Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Can't have that. Can someone might get... get the idea that he is eternal. Change the Son of God to a Son of the Gods. My Sorry about that, so I noticed my battery is dying, so I'm going to cut this short. Micah 5.2 Another chance to attack the eternal existence of Christ. Draw everlasting. And that's just a few examples of how you can reference your newer translation of the Bible to the King James Bible. And for the full checklist, go to the uh, article, King Difference of Bible translations on spiritualmessiahministries.org. If you go to spiritualmessiahministries.org and you open up the article, Differences in Bible Translations, <coughs> it'll have a little more information than what I presented here in this video on the different translations. <coughs> Excuse me. It will also uh, give you a few more uh, converses than what I have given you in this video from the King James Bible as opposed to the newer translation.